and this way be able to focus even more on just like the artistic music making part that is way more fun than just guessing, mixing the entire day and then listening to it in the car, it doesn't translate and then like change it again. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog, welcome to the A Studio, still under construction. Today it's one step back, unfortunately, as you might be able to see, there is a lot of absorbing material right over here. It's all like fully covered, really messy, really itchy. I hate that stuff. So why is it there? It was all before right here in the corner. I had two huge corner absorbers there and another one over there. Those are the ones that I made two years ago when I moved into the studio. I didn't have the money. I didn't have acoustician studio builders advising me. So I just made those huge corner base traps in the front. And in the back, I had like maybe 20 centimeters of absorbing material. Now doing it properly, 40 centimeters all around, air gap of 40 centimeters, one meter 50 in the back. And these front corner absorbers will be replaced with something else. I'll share it once we get there, but I'm happy that we removed them. Cause uh, yeah. So you know, we had some mold and water problems here in the studio. This corner right down here was all black. It was now repainted by construction workers just a couple of minutes ago. Let's check if he really, yeah, he made it properly all the way down, but you can still see here this one black spot. I'll tell him to do it again. And here in the corners, we discovered more. Here in the corners, behind all of the absorbing material, we discovered more. Not a lot more, but still, it's not good to be behind something covered. So whenever you build absorbers and you mount them directly to the wall, you have to put like a special membrane that kind of gets rid of the moisture or doesn't let it pass through to make sure this doesn't happen. Usually it doesn't, but it can. And especially these walls are to the outside. And as you know, <laughs> we're in the harbor it's like a freestanding building, so all of the weather hits that side a lot. And we have a lot of cracks in the building due to those um, guys outside there with the steel. They sometimes drop it and you get like cracks in the building. So we're fixing all of this. That's why these corner absorbers had to go. We'll be replaced soon. And yeah, now trying to take care of <laughs> that huge mess over there. There's just absolutely no way to explain to you how annoying that green stuff is. I hate it, it itches, it smells weird. It's not really that healthy. And like this entire studio build, my plan was to build it in a way that I never ever again have to touch it. That's why it's in these blocks. I can take them apart and just carry it somewhere else. So if I ever have to move, the green stuff stays in there, not touching it again. I still need to build a ceiling, the front wall, the front wall. Yeah, it kind of looks like advertisement for rock wool, but it's not. It's just the cheapest stuff that absorbs the best. And yeah, I'm not sure how to build the front wall. That's the biggest question mark. I got in contact with a couple of studio designers, very highly professional people, and they do not agree. So I don't know which plan of those to actually pick. So I'll just move the speakers a little, measure again, actually do right now another measurement. Not a whole lot has changed. I mean, the corner absorbers are gone, but I filled it again. But I'm pretty sure there will be a difference in, in the measurement. It hurts, it always hurts. And the measurement, yeah, it looks all right. Didn't change that much. There are some things better and other worse. Let me actually show you room EQ wizard really quick. It's not a room EQ wizard tutorial by any means. Just that you get like a general impression of what is happening here in this room. So first up, we got the frequency response and this might not look flat at all and it's not there yet. We got three problems. The first one is at 30 Hertz. I don't know why, we have a big peak. It's not that troublesome peaks you can actually like in 
in the speaker with like DSP, Q, and you can get rid of them. So I'm not worried too much. And again, the ceiling still needs to be treated at the front wall. So this will definitely still change. The next one is at 74 to like 50, like a dip. And that's annoying because 50 is where the kick sits at. And then we got another one, and that one is new at 139. Yesterday, this one wasn't there. And the only thing I changed is um, behind that wall is like a gap, and I filled it, I just stored the, the rest of the absorbing material in there, and it's now here in the front replacing the corner absorbers. So I will actually next put some back in there and measure again and see if I can get rid of the 139 hertz. And everything above that looks really, really fine. There is a drop from 10K. I don't know why. It might be the speakers. The, I, I didn't have that in any measurement before. It's maybe just a measurement mistake. And if you now put it into um, smoothing, which you usually do, 112th or 124th, it looks already pretty flat. Then we got the RT60, the reverb times of the studio. And this just looks really, really good. Like above 200 hertz we're um really low and it all is like very equally distributed below that still a little more decay time but that's normal that's really hard to control waterfall is also really good to see problems in your studio we got again the 135 hertz problem I really don't know what it is. It could also be speaker boundary interference. So placing the speaker somewhere else might get rid of it because I actually moved them a tiny bit. Yeah, let's put some of these back into the back wall and see if it changes anything. Again, that green stuff. I hate it. I hate it so much, but I'll do anything for a good studio. No, I mean it changed it, but I think it even made it worse. Remove smoothly after. Yeah, it made it, <laughs> it, made it worse. Um, so now we got a way bigger dip at 50 hertz and the 136, also worse. Okay, more absorption into the front wall. It's crazy, acoustics, like I'm just doing this for you to show you how things, I mean, how many packages? I think seven packages of um, absorbing material in the back and taken from the front. That's how it already affects the, the frequency response. And don't worry, I have like a call with my acoustic guy tonight, um, maybe for two or three hours, because he's not from Germany, he's from far away, but he's helping me with all of the planning. And um, he'll then let me know where to put what. This was just like a quick test to showcase to you the difference um, by just moving stuff around, changing the speaker positions, changing changing the sweet spot, changing where the absorbing stuff sits. Um, can't wait to have this room fully, fully finished. And now for the rest of the day, I think after all of that work and that itchy stuff, I deserve like a nice listening session. I don't know, but I, I just love sitting in the studio and listening to music for hours and hours. I, I completely forget the time. Best day ever. Best, really best day ever in the studio. So much fun listening to music. Of course, before listening to music, I moved all of the packages back in place. I mean, come on, there's no way I'm listening to music if I know in my head that there is a possibility to listen to it even more accurate. So I moved all of them back. The measurements are even better. I moved the table by this much to the front, this much also the sweet spot to the front, angled the speakers a little differently, and I got the best result so far. The smoothing is on 1 12th, and if we now just like pick a line in between all of the dips and everything, we get to, to the lows 5 dB and to the ups 5 dB. So right now, this room at the sweet spot is plus minus 5 dB, everything above 35 Hertz, which is amazing. That's really, really, really good. 
the 30 hertz i don't know what's happening there but we'll we'll get there eventually one of the acoustic guys will tell me how to get rid of it and also the 50 hertz i would love to have it like 5 db up but worst case again you can solve it with dsp and get it to maybe plus minus 3 db which would be really amazing you usually spend a ton of money to get there and let's check the rt60 not a lot changed that looks good waterfall also looks really good except for the 30 and 50 hertz so i'm happy all of this so far was worth it i also started mixing one of the songs that i mixed downstairs the difference is not huge it's not an entirely different song but i'd say like for example in the first versions the vocals were a little too loud popping out of the mix the high frequencies as i explained yesterday were way too harsh i hear it immediately here it almost hurts i pulled them down it is way more in check with all other songs that i listened in a and b compared to it also i like increased the kick a tiny bit to make it cut through and sound a bit more clubby so in general i'm really really happy if i ever ever release a song again that you think is mixed wrong then it's either my artist intent to mix it on purpose wrong or i just suck at mixing but not the room will make me mix my songs worse than, than necessary. I'm really happy to like cross off one annoying thing when it comes to music making and this way be able to focus even more on just like the artistic music making part that is way more fun than just guessing, mixing the entire day and then listening to it in the car, it doesn't translate and then like change it again. It's a big waste of time. Hello? Yeah, Vanessa? didn't see it built this far. She's coming, picking me up. So let's see what she thinks about this place and if it's actually worth it. I think she has a different answer than me. Welcome to the new studio. Good? Yeah, I like the fabric. Yeah, was worth changing it. Yeah, for sure. Very accurate. Everything is straight in a line. Yeah, you don't need me to check. No, no. The big question is just, what kind of color for the floor? Not this one. Okay, I agree. And not this one? I agree. Perfect. I think I like the darker one, but the brighter one makes more sense. I also like the darker one. Don't worry, it won't be too dark in here because I have 40 LEDs. This is just one. Like imagine this 40 times and that's just like half an LED. So 80 times as bright as that, as that one up there. Ah, <sighs> girls. But it's it's good. Like. They have other brains, eyes, like they, like Vanessa always checks if it gets dirty. I never, like I just look at it, it looks epic, I go for it. Vanessa's like, no, it gets dirty. So you step on them, it still, it still looks the same. Maybe our shoes are not dirty enough. Oh, trust me, my shoes are dirty. That's it, it's good. Trust me, everyone watching would like love to sit there and listen. Yeah? Yeah. So yeah. maybe you make a giveaway, like... Uh, I was thinking about doing like an open door day once the virus thing is over so people oh, can come so here. maybe in three years you can come <laughs> around. No, like ha half a year to my birthday. Birthday party, October. Half a year from now is October? Okay, now it's a lot sooner. Getting older, faster. Anyways, let's listen to some epic loud music, okay? All right. <laughs> Okay, I think this proves that it sounds good, like really good. Um, can you hear that? What? That it sounds good? Yeah. Or is it just loud for you? Well, I like that song, so... Yeah, the song's good. I think that matters at the end more. But I'm happy. Studio is getting somewhere. And now you want to have dinner or... Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. 